Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you today for your word. We come before it with open hearts and open minds to receive re revelation from heaven in this life of faith, and we praise you and thank you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to whom we belong yes. and whom we serve. Thank you, Father. And would you welcome today this mighty man of God. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Yes, yes, he is. Dr. Melvin Barney, Esquire. Glory to God. Don't you like that? Esqu I wish I was an Esquire. <laughs> Glory to God. God. Now, he has written a book. This book has had a, a, a powerful impact on me. This man is an attorney, and he pastors in Sacramento, California. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, look, at, look at the dog ears I've got all over this book. And Melvin, thank you for coming and, and opening our eyes concerning the name and the name that's above every name that's named, glory to God. Amen. And his book, Say My Name, The Third Commandment, it's probably not what you think. And I I thought I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, no, I didn't. I just had an idea. So let's go to the book. Amen. In the book of Exodus, where this is found, and we will look at it. This is where... The Ten Commandments were written. Mm -hmm. Now, Melvin, you're being an attorney and studied law. How many laws would you say are on the books in this country? Oh my gosh. I don't even know if we can put a number behind it because you have so many different jurisdictions. Yeah. And all of the jurisdictions have hundreds of thousands, if not even millions of laws. All to enforce 10. <laughs> there is a way to read these. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Why would you want another one? Mm -hmm. These were written so that he could bless his people. Yes. That's what, the blessing is what's behind all of this. Mm -hmm. So, um, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt make uh, unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, that in the earth beneath, or that is water uh, under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, I'm jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh, now the seventh, seventh verse, third commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Uh, I had an extremely limited view of that, probably like everybody else had. Mm -hmm. But now this is where you come in, lawyer, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we were conditioned. Um, I'm one who grew up in church like many of us. And, you know, we hear the Ten Commandments. As, you know, we're introduced to the Ten Commandments at a very, very yeah. early age. And most of us uh, have been conditioned and taught that that Third Commandment is speaking of irreverence. Uh, that we're not to use the name of the Lord in an irreverent way. Whereas when you actually go into the Greek and Hebrew, and this is something that I learned from you, uh, learning from you uh, what it means to actually dig into the Word of God and to uh, um, go deeper into it. And so I studied the Hebrew. I wanted to know what this was. Actually, I was given an assignment to find out what this meant. And in going into the Hebrew and dissecting it from the Hebrew's perspective, I, under, I came to the conclusion that what we've been conditioned and trained to believe that this passage of Scripture means is absolutely not untrue. It's not, it's, not, it's not the case at all. Well, and you know, it just, 
Well, I wrote here, bless, don't curse. Mm -hmm. Use his name to curse somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more than that. So much more than that. So much more. And in order to understand what it actually means, you have to, as I indicated, go into that Hebrew. And that Hebrew word, which is translated uh, in, our, in our translations, our English translations, many of them take, you shall not take, yes. uh, the name of the Lord your God in vain. That Hebrew word that is translated take actually means to carry. That's what really opened my eyes. That word means to lift or to bear, kind of like a person who is, uh, police officers who are authorized to bear arms, a person who goes to a grocery store to carry uh, her groceries uh, from the store home. That's what that word means, how you carry something. It doesn't mean, it's not talking about using it the way that it's used. It's talking about uh, the way that it's carried or toted, you know, when you tote something from one place to another. So it, it, it gives me the image of how the people of God back uh, in, uh, when they were going through the wilderness, how they would carry the Ark of the Covenant from one place to another. They would tote it around with them and they would set up their camps around that Ark mm -hmm. of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. And so with this passage of scripture, it's, it's giving the same imagery of imagery of carrying the name of the Lord with us, if we're believers, everywhere that we go. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It, um, huh. I, let's, let's go to the 18th chapter of Proverbs. In um, Proverbs 18.10, And we'll notice this and we won't read we won't just stop with this tenth verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The righteous run into it and are safe. Now, uh, it means that the name is above every name. Yes. It's a strong tower. It's a place of deliverance. Mm -hmm. But it, it's worthless if you don't use it. The title of the book is Say My Name. Mm -hmm. You're carrying... We carry the name. And now, Melvin, talk about the prayer that Jesus prayed, the model prayer, okay. and how you talked about the name there. Well, Jesus, when the disciples went to Jesus and they asked him, you know, we see uh, John's disciples praying and we're looking at, you know, these scribes and Pharisees and all their disciples praying and different ones' disciples praying. Uh, why don't you teach us to pray the way that John taught his disciples to pray? And Jesus, in introducing that to them, he says, well, this is how you pray after this manner. You say, you say, you pointed out say, and yes. that is so important when people ask the question, can you pray uh, in your thoughts? I don't believe you can because Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's the first thing he did. And um, so th what does this business mean about hallowing the name? Uh, and how does that relate to when I'm when I studied this in my mind, you know, just going all over the place? How does that relate to how we bear or carry or tote around the name? Because Jesus says to hallow the name. Well, that word hallow is it means to sanctify. It means to set His mm -hmm. name apart. To recognize uh, that is distinct. That is different. That is not normal. And so He says to hallow the name. So then. Uh, when we hallow the name, it's like seed. Something else I learned from you, words mean seed. It's like seed. And when you sow seed, um, um, the way that you sow seed is you take it and you plant it. And when you plant that seed, 
there's an expectation that that seed is going to bear a crop for you at some point or another. And so what Jesus is teaching uh, when he tells us to start off by recognizing the holiness of God's name, recognizing what his name means and what's all packed into his name, what he's telling us is that when we do so, we're sowing his name. Mm -hmm. And as a result of sowing his name, what we have a right to do then is to expect a spiritual crop. Oh, that's that's a result of his thing. That's a result of his When thing. you sow mm -hmm. an apple seed, you're not expecting lemons. You're expecting apples to grow. You're, you're, you're expecting an apple tree to sprout, at, sprout up at some time, and it's going to be full of apples. You're looking for that day that it's full of apples. And then if you know what to do with those seeds, you'll never run out of apples again. If you know how to take the seed that comes from each apple and keep sowing it, you, you're going to multiply in your apple crop. And before you know it, you'll have an apple orchard. And so what Jesus is teaching us with respect to the name is that when we learn how to sow the name in order to reap the benefit of the name, whatever the name promises us, when we learn how to sow that name, we will reap a harvest that will result from what that name All is. All right. Now, you, you reminded me something out of the book. Tell me about your mother and uh, her gardens and, and the way she... Oh, my grandmother. I mean, your grandmother. My grandmother. Me. Yeah. My grandmother was from Mississippi. And uh, my family, at some point in time, they migrated to Ohio, which is where I was born. Uh, but my grandmother had the biggest garden in Ohio because she brought <laughs> everything from Mississippi with her. And so I remember how, um, you know, she'd be out there on a daily basis uh, working in that garden. And she'd have us out there with her just kind of pulling up weeds and helping to plant seed and so on and so forth. And every once in a while, she would go out and say, you know, I think I want you know, some uh, uh, corn today, or I think I want some lettuce today. And she'd go out to the garden or send us out to the garden, and there, there were none. And so we juice up all the lettuce. And so what we noticed is that my grandmother used to always, for some reason, stockpile seed in her windowsill. <laughs> so she would send us upstairs and go get the seed that's in the windowsill. And that seed, you know, the, the packet may have turned yellow now because it's been in there for so long. Sometimes it's been sitting in that windowsill for a year. And what I noticed is that as long as that seed was sitting in that windowsill, it never produced it a harvest. It never produced anything. City, it could be sitting there for months. It could be sitting there for years. You would not get lettuce as long as that seed was sitting in the windowsill. But when she said, go grab that seed, and we would go get the seed, bring it down to her, and then she would plant it in the garden. After a few weeks, now we've got lettuce growing. So what I learned from my grandmother that is that you have to sow your seed if you want to produce your harvest. That's right. And likewise, with respect to the name of the Lord, God's name is so all-encompassing. It is the name that is above every name. It is an, uh, when Moses asked the question, who am I going to tell the people it is that sent me? He said, you can't put me in a box. Just tell them I am that I am because whatever it is that you need me to be, that's who I am. And so uh, with respect to the name, if I need uh, something that God's name promises me, I, learn, I need to learn how to sow the seed of that name, just as I would learn how to sow that lettuce seed in order to produce lettuce or oh, sow that right. apple seed in order to produce apples. I learned how to sow the name of the Lord in order to gain the benefit of that name. And when I do so, I've got a harvest that's coming. Isn't that good? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that powerful? That's the, king, that's the kingdom principle, Brother Copeland. Well, yes, it is. Jesus said it was. He said it is. He said, if you can understand this parable, you can understand it all. The sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. And the king, whole kingdom of God is a man plants a seed in the ground. And I like Luke's uh, rendition of that same passage because Luke lets us know that the seed is the word of God. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Then. Yes. Now, <clears throat> the name, the Lord had me write this down like this. Mm -hmm. The names of love. Hmm. Jehovah Roha. Mm -hmm. He's my shepherd. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh or Jira. Hmm. He sees and provides. Yeah. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Sitz Canoe, he is our righteousness. 
Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. Now that, that, that's a huge word. It's translated prosperity. Mm -hmm. It's translated more than enough. Mm -hmm. And we learned years ago from Billy Brim when she went to Israel and studied Hebrew, mm -hmm. since it's a greeting there, Shalom. they said the, the easiest way to translate that is nothing missing, nothing Praise. broken. Wholeness. Praise God. So when you, uh, when, when God reveals to you or to me that he wants us to sow money into someone's life, mm -hmm. then in his mind, something's missing from us. Mm. Well, of course, this is the reason we get so terribly much flack from people because of teaching and preaching prosperity. Mm -hmm. Because the reason of that is not the people, it's the devil behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because as long as he could keep the church poor, they couldn't get done what God wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And but, but God said, no, no. I told you to give that $100 so you have something missing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to replace it. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not going to give you 100 back. You might as well have kept the hundred if you. Exactly. <laughs> no, no. Jesus talked about an offering in the tenth chapter of Mark, when the rich young ruler got sad and left and didn't hear the answer. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the one that said, uh, I, "People have said that Copeland promises his donors a hundredfold return. I never did in my life. The word does. Not one time." <laughs> I never did say I would give you a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. I can't afford that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wouldn't even try. That is not my place. Jesus said it. Jesus. I read it, mm -hmm. and it's a blood back promise. He's the one that promised it. He said it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In his name. In his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when you talk about that, uh, uh, it takes me over to the first chapter. Well, you know what? Genesis. We missed one here. Okay. Jehovah Nisi, he's my canopy, my covering, my banner. Mm -hmm. In other words, he never leaves me nor forsakes me. This is the one that people misread and don't get it. They read it Jehovah Sabbath. No, Jehovah Sabaoth. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts mm -hmm. all over that first covenant. The Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. the Lord of the angelic armies of yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that comes up in Malachi 3, 24 times in that little book. <laughs> and it has to do with our tithing. Mm -hmm. The angels are involved in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And then when you read Hebrews 1, 14, it refers you to Malachi <laughs> As one, and in Malachi it refers you to Hebrews mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1 14. And all, all of it goes back, I was getting ready to say earlier, to Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, where Jesus said, let, where, where God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Let's look the at that. Earth, let's let's put our eyes seed. on that. Praise God. So he says, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself. I heard Brother Copeland say, God put the power in the seed to make itself come to pass. Mm -hmm. That's what Genesis chapter 1 is telling us right there. And yes, it it's a kingdom principle. So any type of seed has within itself the power to make itself come to pass, to reproduce itself. And it goes back here to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, where God said, whose seed is in itself. And so when you talk about uh, how the devil has uh, tricked the people of God with respect to giving, it's because we don't understand that that seed has the power to produce itself. It's a kingdom principle. It's, it's how God operates. It's a, he says in that other scripture that you just quoted over, a moment ago over Mark, he says, so is the kingdom of God. Yes, he did. <laughs> as if a man should cast seed into the ground. It's a 
kingdom principle. Yeah. Everything's a seed. Everything. Everything comes from a seed. Everything. Everybody comes from a seed. Everyone. Has to be. Mm -hmm. can, nothing can function without it. And that's that, as you call it, that granddaddy parable. Yes, sir. The sower sows the word. Yes, sir. Praise God. Now, let's remind ourselves of something. We need to, I wrote right here, replenish, perpetually renew and supply. Mm -hmm. So we need to remind ourselves again what this book is. Um, there was a charlatan preacher. He got caught. Then he tried to make it in show business and flopped. And uh, he said, I'll tell you, they're a bloody bunch. Mm. No, this is a bloody book. Mm -hmm. And when you hear someone say, well, I bloody well will, that's a blasphemous thing to say because that is using the blood in vain mm -hmm. because these are blood covenants. Yes. All the way through. Mm -hmm. The very first one in the 15th chapter of Genesis was in the blood of animals and a very specific manner of cutting that covenant mm -hmm. where the animal was cut down the center of the spine and the halves fell over, making a blood pool. Glory, glory. Each animal was done that way except for the birds. Mm -hmm. And God walked in that blood. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that Abram saw his footprints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that changed his life mm -hmm. forever. So now he had a type before him. Mm -hmm. And then in the 17th chapter of Genesis, what did he do? Let's look at it. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am El Shaddai. Yes. The God who's more than enough. Mm -hmm. the, the referring to a nurse or to nursing, a mother nursing a child. Mm -hmm. More than enough. More than enough. And I remember that with, with John and Kelly. Gloria was everything to those children. Mm -hmm. She was their food. She spent all of her time with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I, I wasn't there all the time. She was. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not sitting in judgment of anyone as, as far as it goes. But when you put the feeding of your baby in someone else's hands, and then those people let you down. Mm -hmm. You got a problem. But there was an answer to that. Nobody has said a word about it on television. All any mother would have to do is go get some goat's milk. It is absolutely the closest milk there is milk. to a mother's milk. Mm -hmm. Cow's milk is not. The protein uh, is too large. Mm -hmm. It's not good. You have to change it up, and, but formula. You don't have to use formula in a goat's milk. Mm -hmm. But nobody mentioned that. Oh, you wouldn't want to do something like that. Well, all right, go ahead. Depend on the government. Mm -hmm. That won't work. <laughs> Tim, what? Oh, he said we're out of time. 
Boy, don't you like these three or four yeah. minute broadcasts? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back in just a moment. Glory to God. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. What does the third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, really mean? There have been various interpretations in the church throughout history. What if most of us had the wrong impression of the meaning and are not honoring God's instruction to our fullest potential? Enter Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire with his book, Say My Name. This book breaks down the names of God listed in scripture and what each name means to you. He teaches how to use the power of attorney to use the names as a tool as God instructs and sow them as a seed to see goodness grow in your life. The kingdom principle of sowing and reaping applies even to the names of the Lord. When you open your mouth to speak his name, you use the power of God to manifest the promises that the name stands for, such as peace, healing, comfort, and guidance. Why? Because God put the power in the name to make itself come to pass. This is a kingdom principle. Learn what God has in store for you when you know how to say his name. You are authorized to carry the name of the Lord and have power of attorney to act on Jesus' behalf. Order your copy of Dr. Melvin Barney's book, Say My Name, available for nine pounds. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225 787 310. This offer is good for 30 days. Outside the UK, call for postage. Contact your regional office today. Wasn't that good? <laughs> Glory to God. Now, thank you for being with us today. I know if you're anything like me and all the rest of us here, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Melvin Barney reminding you that God loves you and we love you and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Well, praise him. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us on The Believer's Voice of Victory. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want you to be victorious in life. Go to kcm.org.uk for free ministry resources and teaching tools to help you grow in faith and live in the blessing of the Lord. Stay connected with us through our website and all of our social channels to help us keep you informed and up to date on ministry outreaches, upcoming events, and specials that are available to you.